Hey there, it's Denise from Womahat.com and this time we're going to knit mini teddy bears. For a list of supplies and more information, visit the website. As always, I recommend watching the video completely before starting the project. And special thanks to Promise Learning for covering the cost of closed captioning. We're going to start with the drawstring cast on and for that you're going to need one strand of worsted weight yarn that you're going to secure to the anchor peg. I'm going to be doing a simple knot. You could do a slip knot if that's more comfortable for you and the direction that you start your project doesn't really affect it. I'm going to the right. We're going to take that working yarn and put it before between the first and last bring it back through the first and then we're going to zigzag through the pegs it looks like this you're just coming in and out in and out through your pegs and you're going to do that in a circular manner so you're going to go all the way around until you're back at the front and you're going to take your yarn behind peg one bring it back over to the front and you're going to lay it loosely over a few pegs you know five or six and then hold on to it with your fingers and now with your hook you're going to knit off every peg that has two loops in other words you're going to knit off every other peg if you tighten the cast on too much then you will have a hard time when you try to knit the first row so this is why I tell you to keep this uh, working yarn nice and loose and you're going to continue to knit off again all of the pegs that have two loops and you're going to go around the loom until you are back at the front and once you knit off um, your last peg which is peg 24 your cast on is done and you're ready for row one so you will be knitting 30 rows, but the first row is a little different. Peg one does not have two loops, it only has one. So you're just gonna take your working yarn and lay it over pegs one and two, which is like skipping peg one, and you're going to knit off peg two. You're only doing this on row one. Now you're gonna continue to knit the rest of your pegs and we are using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. So you half wrap and knit off, half wrap and knit off, and you're on row one. So you're gonna continue your knitting in the round. And once you finish knitting off um, right here, which is going to be peg 24, you are done with your first row. You're ready to go to the second. And here we are, we're knitting off like I said, every peg, including peg one, and you're going to do that for 30 rows in total, and that does not count your cast on. You don't count the cast on as one of your rows. So knit your 30 rows, and once you've done those 30, you are ready to cast off. We're gonna use my modified version of the flat drawstring cast off, which is kinda easy and kinda not. You're gonna start by wrapping the working yarn around your loom two times. Cause yeah, you need a long tail. And go ahead and cut your yarn. And you're going to get your hook. And what we're going to do is, you're going from the bottom, here's peg one. From the bottom, you're gonna come and scoop your yarn up and feed it through. Go behind the next peg and bring it forward with your hook again scoop it from the bottom up and feed it through take the working yarn behind the next peg like so bring it back to the front with the hook scoop it up and feed it through and you're going to continue this process you're skipping one and feeding the yarn through the next one from the bottom upward and out and you're going to do that again for every other peg when you get back to the front you stop at peg 23 right here this is the anchor peg so in between because you want every other one and then you're going to remove the loops uh, off the pegs that you've worked on so the ones where you fed the yarn through those are the ones you're removing this time 
okay so go all the way around the yarn I'm sorry all the way around the loom until you've removed all the pegs um, that you fed the working yarn through and then you can pull it and you'll see that it's every other one you see as you pull the drawstring okay now on this second round you're going to then do the loops that are left so here's a peg with a loop feed it through you're basically again doing every other peg now this is going to give you two layers of drawstring and that's when it gets tricky so that's why I'm saying that this technique is kinda easy and kinda not it's all about your timing so you're gonna once you remove these loops I want you to work on this rather slowly you can do this part quickly because you're just gonna feed your yarn through um, again all of the pegs that have loops you're gonna feed your working yarn through them and um, once you're done just like before you're going to remove those loops off of your pegs and what you're working on right now is the head and torso of your bear so let's go ahead and move those off and keep in mind that this is the top part of your bear alright so now you've got your fabric off the loom and I want you to see that there are two layers see unlike other um, cast ons and cast off this one has two so you want to keep in mind in the direction that you were knitting and that's how you're going to pull this drawstring and you don't want to do it all at one time I know it seems you get the urge to do that but fight that urge don't close it all at one time as you can see I'm pulling the inside first slowly because this can become a knot and then I do a little bit of that um, other, that second one. So you see here where it becomes a second row. So first you do the inside a little bit at a time, pulling on it. Don't rush it. Um, it's better to do this again as, you know, slowly. And you pull like a little bit at a time from the inside, a little bit from the outside, and then pull your drawstring because uh, you do want it's a lot of string and you want to get that out so you're pulling on the inside to close it up don't worry too too much about the inside your bigger problem well your bigger task is getting the outside uh, portion nice and closed so as you can see I'm almost there and ta-da it's closed see and it's nice and flat this is why it's the top and then you're gonna stretch your fabric I call this stretching your stitches because that's actually what you're doing but it seems to confuse some folks so this is stretching your fabric and then as you can see it's nice and flat and it'll look nice on the top of your bear then um, I get a pair of scissors and this one frailed a lot so I'm gonna cut it off get my metal um, needle you can use the plastic and I'm gonna thread that um, working yarn and then I'm going to start sewing in a circular manner so these top um, stitches I just go ahead and put my needle through those top stitches and I'm going around in a circle this uh, gives you a very nice clean look and uh, if you go around enough you kinda almost um, don't really need to make a knot it is a good idea to make one but it secures it really well so go ahead and sew your top nicely and then um, I do it at least two times if you're gonna make a knot one time is good enough but I like to have it nice and secure I don't want any issues so I make sure to go around uh, the circle at least twice and then you can um, go ahead and push the needle back into the other side to the inside part and go ahead and make a knot and you can cut this string off you're nice and secure and keep that string because you're going to use it for later and keep this uh, nice and situated we're going to work with that uh, later as well so put it to the side and let's start the next part you're going to knit the arms and legs exactly the same with 8 rows and 12 pegs so count off 12 
and if you're like me you might need to go ahead and mark those 12 pegs I've marked peg 1 here uh, by the anchor peg and here's my peg 12 we're going to decrease by 2 on each side so I did mark those as well then you're going to need to go ahead and secure your working yarn to the anchor peg just as before and we're going to be casting on those 12 pegs using the drawstring cast on so go ahead and zigzag through those 12 pegs until you get to peg number 12 and the difference here is you're going to basically wrap and turn on peg 12 because we're going to be knitting flat and lay that working yarn loosely over those 12 pegs get your hook and just like before you're going to knit off every peg that has two loops and the last one being right here on peg 10 and once you've done that your cast on is done and just like before peg 1 uh, only has one loop so you wrap and turn there and knit off peg 2 and continue uh, with the rest of the pegs in the row and you're going to be using just like before the U-wrap version of the knit stitch so wrap and um, knit off half wrap and knit off and continue uh, on that row remember that this is row one because you don't ca count your cast on and when you get here to peg 11 like it looks a little funny don't worry about it just bring your working yarn forward and knit off and you finish row one and you're ready to turn directions because again you're knitting flat so you're going back and forth instead of in a row and go ahead and finish at this point we are working on row two and even though you have eight rows in total we are going to be knitting uh, three rows and then that's when we're going to do the decrease so here we uh, finished row two we wrap and we turn and once you're finished with the last peg on row three and you're ready to start row four this is when we're going to start the decreases and we're going to decrease two on each end and in order to do that we're going to turn directions again and knit off those first two pegs so there's one here's two and then you're going to take the loop off of the second peg bring it over to peg well I'm gonna to have to say peg 20 uh, peg 12 knit off take the loop off of peg 12 and put it on 11 and then tighten your yarn go ahead and knit off peg 10 and then take that loop and bring it over to peg 11 knit off peg 11 and then take that loop and you're going to put it on peg 10 and you're done uh, with your decreases which was just to bind off those two pegs right there and you're going to go ahead and finish your row this is row four and um, once you are done with row four and you're ready to turn and start row five you're going to do the same thing you need to bind off two pegs on this side I'm going to go ahead and take the um, the little knot that I had on the anchor peg before I do this and then I'm going to knit off peg, pegs one and two and once I knit off peg two then I'm going to take that loop bring it over to peg one I'm going to tighten the yarn knit off peg one and move it move the loop over to peg two which is now my new per se peg one I'm going to then knit off the next peg and take that loop and bring it back over and knit off that one knit off that peg and then once I knit off the that one I take the loop and I bring it over and now I've decreased by two on each end and I'm going to go ahead and finish row five so I have just a few more uh, pegs to go and once I've done that now I'm just going to knit back and forth and I 
I am now on row six. So I need to finish my row six, row seven. And once I finish row eight, then I am ready to cast off. So I'm going to take my working yarn and lay it over all of the pegs that I'm working on, which in this case are now eight. And then I'm going to take that working yarn and feed it through each one of those pegs. And I hope you guys saw that I did cut my working yarn in order to be able to do this. So I'm going to feed this working yarn through my eight pegs, which is what I have left now after decreasing uh, two on each end. Um, and once I've done that, then I can just remove those loops from the pegs and I will have um, my leg. And I do have to um, go ahead and stretch uh, these stitches. So first, let me go ahead and remove the loops uh, off the pegs so I can free my fabric from the loom. So you start off with this really crunchy, funky looking piece of fabric. So just go ahead and stretch it out so it looks like it's supposed to. And the really loose loops, don't worry, you just pull on your string on both ends. Um, and that'll straighten it out. See? Just like this. And um, we will be sewing these so that it does look like a leg, so don't worry about it. Again, just make sure that your stitches or your fabric are nice and stretched so that your stitch looks like it's supposed to look. They're supposed to look like a lot of little V's. And then um, we're going to take this working yarn and we're going to uh, use it to sew the little foot together. You don't need to stuff um, your legs or arms, so you don't have to worry about stuffing here. All you need to do is make sure that you have a needle. So get your needle ready. So go ahead and finish threading your needle and then you're going to pull on that drawstring so that the flat fabric curves. And then take the needle and you're gonna feed it through the top um, stitches right here like this and by the way, you're going to do this on the other end as well. You need to also um, go ahead and close the top, so you're going to be doing it the same way. You take the working uh, yarn and you're going to feed it through these stitches in a circular manner, pulling on the drawstring as you sew in order to close that little hole. And then we just um, need to go ahead and bring the two sides together. And so um, with your uh, needle, you're gonna go side to side. You will find that on this little part right here, one side is a little longer than the other. Don't worry about that. You just, if necessary, just pull on your fabric and uh, stretch it out uh, in order to get them to line up. You're just gonna manip manipulate these two sides in order to line them up. And in some cases, you might find that you need to actually go through um, the same loop two times in order to get them um, to line up nicely and I had to do this just so that it was easier for you guys um, to do the knitting so it's no biggie you're gonna go from side to side in order to create a stitch right so I get I go through one loop on one side go to the other and sew through that. Don't pull on the drawstring very tightly. It'll give you um, a really ugly look. So real nice and gently, we pull one loop from one side, one from the other, and then just keep sewing all the way up until you get to the very tip. And, um, and then you're done. And then you just have to cl close the top just like you close the bottom.
Now I did want to give you guys an alternative to uh, this particular one where we decrease by two on each side. If you want your little arms to be more defined and then your leg, then by decreasing by three instead of two on each side, you'll get this deeper curve like this here. Or again, you can just do all four of them exactly the same. All right, let's work on the ears and snout or nose. It's five pegs for five rows. And just like all the other parts, we're going to secure the yarn to the anchor peg and then zigzag through five pegs. And we're doing the drawstring cast on. So we're going to knit off every peg with two loops and then start knitting in. Uh, I'm sorry, we'll be knitting flat instead of in the round. So we're going back and forth. That was row one. Here is two. And once you're done with row two, you need to do three more rows. If you want to distinguish the snout from the ears, you can just add an additional row. And so at that point, it would be six instead of five. I have done both. They look just the same to me. But, you know, if you want to make the nose a little different, you can add a row or two. I wouldn't do too much more than that because you don't want to take up the whole face. All right, so we're doing the uh, drawstring cast off. And, and that's the five um, pegs. We are done. Take the fabric off the loom and just like before, we're going to stretch those stitches and pull on the draw drawstring in order to give the little ears and the snout the shape that you need. Now you kind of want to secure that um, string and so we're going to go ahead and thread the needle and put the th strings through those loops on both ends. So you're gonna do exactly the same thing. All right, and once you've done that, your um, parts are done. Um, and again, all three of them are exactly the same. You just wanna kinda secure um, that loose thread so that um, your parts keep their shape. And once you've done three of these, then we're ready to go ahead and put the little bear together so of course guess what assembly is required make sure you have all eight parts your head and body legs and feet hands and arms ears and snout now you're going to need about 0.3 ounces of the polyfill go ahead and put that inside the body part and you're going to massage it into shape and then get your needle and we're going to thread the drawstring because you need to close this little hole um, a lot better so with the needle you're going to sew in a circular manner right through those top stitches just like you did before sewing and pulling on the string until you feel that it's really really secure I would say this is the bottom part, so I would go around at least three or four times and just keep pulling and securing and pulling and securing. Um, in this, on this particular teddy, I did not put a knot, but a knot is a good idea, especially on the bottom and more so if you're going to give it to a child. So I feed it through the top and then I'm going to cut off the excess yarn and I'm going to go ahead and shape the teddy in um, massage it into shape get the uh, leftover drawstring and wrap it around um, one third of the body this way you're going to be able to distinguish the head from the body and tighten the string really really good and make a knot you really should make at least two knots and then you can just with your needle or with a crochet hook Feed that leftover yarn up towards the top um, with both parts and then um, you can cut off the excess yarn. I'm using my needle just for an economy of parts. I didn't want to pull out the crochet hook as well so that's why I'm using the needle to do this. Alright so now you have separation between the top part of the teddy and the bottom and we're ready to 
place the other parts where we want them. It just helps you to kind of get a good vision before you start sewing. I don't like to sew until I've put all of the parts in place. This helps me if you have another way of doing the same thing, then, you know, do it a different way. It's okay. I have found that this is just easier for me uh, to just get some pins, put the parts in place, and then I'm going to sew them. If nothing else, like I said, just to make sure that I have all the parts and that they fit well. All right, and then now all you have to do is sew them. I do suggest that if you want to put a little hat or an accessory on your teddy bear, that you put that hat on first and then sew the um, little ears into the hat and the little head. This is going to be way easier than if you want to try to um, make a little hat that gives you space to put the little ears. Uh, this is just an easier method. So... That's why I do it that way. All right, now we're just gonna go ahead and sew the parts. Now with the arms and legs, I like to start off by taking one of the drawstrings and um, feeding it from one end to the other. It's just gonna secure that leg and that arm a lot better. If you want the legs or arms to move, then um, you can sew a button on them and this allows mobility on arms and legs. Again, I'm trying to make this teddy as easy as I can, and so I'm just gonna sew the legs and the arms. Alright, let's sew on the features and we're going to be using black embroidery floss and an embroidery needle. I know that for some of you the snout might be a little tricky 
getting um, the shape done it's basically just a triangle and then you're going to take the floss and fill in that shape go around or um, you know side to side it doesn't really matter as long as it gets filled um, you're not really going to notice any oddities or you know thread out of place don't don't try to keep it all in a line that can get a little overwhelming and it's really not necessary alright once you've done that cut your thread and if you're going to add a little hat like I did here remember that you're putting the little ears on the top of the hat and then you're going to sew straight through the ears and the hat into the fabric on the head of the teddy bear. This is going to secure both the ears and the hat. Alright guys, I hope you like this project. It was lots of fun for me and adding little accessories like this one, it's a good idea to add some glue and sew them on as well. Here are a couple of ideas I wanted to give you that you can do with the teddy bear. If you have the written pattern, it will include the headband, the hat, and the coil. Alright, thanks a lot guys. Remember to share the video. It helps me a lot. Like, comment, and subscribe.